to What's Up Is Scott Yarns with Julie. I am Julie. This is our 10th episode. I can't believe this is the 10th episode. It seemed only like yesterday that I was sitting here recording the very first one and I was such a nervous wreck. Um, for those who hasn't watched the first episode, I was telling everyone how that was my very first filming experience and I was so nervous. I actually had a nightmare the night before. I dreamt that I burned down the store, but good thing it was only a dream and that didn't actually happen. Uh, <laughs> so uh, here we are on the 10th episode and I'm still here, yay! <laughs> uh, so if this is the first time that you're here, welcome. Uh, in this space, we talk about the good stuff that's available at Biscott Yarns, both online at biscottyarns.com and at our physical locations, including the one where I'm in right now, which is in Northvale, New Jersey. That's Northern Bergen County in Jersey. Um, and for those of you who is a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate your support. If you guys haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. And hopefully by the end of the episode, you are gonna like this video so much, you're gonna give it a thumbs up and also share it with your fiber friends. And I'm gonna be on every TV and screen, yay! <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to talk about the, in today's episode, we are going to talk about the poncho that I'm wearing, uh, the cowl and the shawl that is next to me on the mannequin. Uh, there's going to be a sock pattern. Um, so let's dive right into it. We are going to be going on a field trip. The first week of August, we're going to be in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, Interweave is hosting the 2023 Yarn Fest and that's going to take place from August 1st through August 5th. Um, I believe the first two days, uh, the first and the second, which is Tuesday and Wednesday, they're going to have various workshops. And then on the latter three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, there will be a marketplace for which Biscott Yarns is going to set up shop. So if you plan on being there, um, look for us. And if you didn't know about it until now, then most definitely uh, check it out. I'm going to put the link to the event down at the description box so you can read up uh, about it. Hopefully you'll be able to make it. And uh, if you're there, definitely come find us, come say hi. I personally do plan on being there on Saturday, uh, pretty much the whole day. So uh, I hope our paths will cross. Um, I would really, really love to have a two-way conversation with you uh, and to meet you in person instead of just me talking at you uh, as much as I enjoy doing that, oddly. Um, it would be a really nice change for me to have a live in-person conversation. So um, that's the 2023 Yarn Fest hosted by Interweave and hopefully we will see you all there. Biscott Yarns has two Yarn Club subscriptions and I want to talk more in depth to you about uh, one of those subscription clubs. It's called the Self Striping Sock Yarn Subscription. Did I get that right? self-striping sock yarn subscription. Yeah, that sounds about right. So basically what that is, is every month we're gonna send you one skein, one full skein of uh, 100 grams of uh, self-striping sock yarn that is exclusive to subscribers, which means uh, you're not gonna be able to find that colorway on our website nor at any of our physical stores. It's only for the club members. Um, so it's automated. You would just, we would have your credit card on file and then it would be charged when the item is shipped to you uh, once a month. And if there are months where you want to hold off on receiving those uh, sock yarns, then you just manage that on your accounts or just email us and we will hold it for you. So we, you won't be getting uh, any sock and obviously you won't be charged for those months that your subscription is paused. Uh, and when you're ready to get back onto it, then just give us, uh, let us know or manage it online and then uh, 
it will just resume, uh, make you a very happy person to receive yarn once a month. I love subscription clubs because it's like you forget about it or I forget about it. And then I open the mail and then I'm like, wait, what is this? Did I order something? I'm like, oh yeah, that's my uh, subscription, my monthly subscription. It's like the happiest thing. It's like Christmas every month. Anyway, um, I pulled out a few um, examples for you so you get an idea as to what they are. Uh, even the labeling is different. So here's one example uh, from a previous month. Uh, and then here's another one. Like you can see like the colors are very different. So it could be something a little bit bold and fall-like. It could be something a little bit tame or it could be something in between. And here is another example. I believe this one is from the June subscription. And I took the liberty in knitting up something to show you what it looks like. Let me put it on. Um, it's a fingerless knit, so I'll show you the back side first. So here is what it looks like. Here's the yarn that made this. So like knitting the, uh, the fingerless knit is kind of like knitting sock in terms of the sizing. Um, well, a little bit smaller, but anyway, you get the idea of how it, how it was striped. So that come, came from this. And then here is the front part of the mitten so this one let me do a little bit of self-advertising uh so this is actually my original design it's called the may mittens the may mitts m-a-e it's available on my rafflery page um it's the fingerless mitt from the cuff up um and it's very simple lace pattern here it's totally beginner friendly or maybe like advanced beginner um because you're gonna have to handle like dpns and stuff like that but the construction and the lace part of it is not difficult um so anyway here is the lace mitt and i also have uh matching socks to go with it uh for a separate pattern for purchase and the links for those will be available on our website um and speaking of we're gonna be starting another series uh, at the North Fail uh, location uh, soon. And we're gonna be learning how to knit fingerless mitts, uh, specifically uh, these May mitts. Uh, so if you are local or relatively local that you can come to our store uh, and you're interested in participating, uh, please email us or, or call our store manager, Amanda, uh, and she will be able to give you more information about the classes. And also, if you're on Facebook, uh, do follow us, uh, our North Vale uh, Biscot Yarns Facebook group. All the links to our socials, uh, telephone numbers, emails, everything, any way that you can reach us, uh, it's going to be listed below so you don't have to you know, look everywhere for it. It's all right down there. First up, we're going to talk about a sock pattern. It is the Lucida, excuse me, the Lucida socks. Here it is. And it was designed by, let me take a peek, Lauren Rad. Sorry about that. Lauren Rad was the designer of this sock. Um, the Lucida sock is constructed from the top down, so from the cuff down. Um, you can see here, let me hold it up closer to the camera. So here we have about an inch of uh, ribbing for the cuff, and then you work down the leg part, and you'll see that um the label excuse me the cable and the lace pattern if you say cable and lace together you get label uh, so the cable and lace pattern is in the front and in the back of the sock of the leg uh, and on either side you'll see that the pattern is more quiet uh it's just stockinette and i think that's really nice because um while some pattern it will work for you to have the busy pattern all around it worked for some but I really appreciate how the designer um, had some quiet space in between so that the cable and lace or the label pattern uh, would really stand out. So anyway, getting back to the construction, um, you would do the cuff and then you would do the leg and then you would do the, uh, the heel. It's just a heel flap. And then you would continue on to the foot uh, where the pattern continues on here 
and then the bottom per usual is just plain stockinette until you reach the toe part uh, toe decrease uh, wedge toe and then you do your kitchener stitch to sew up the to close up the toe part and then you rinse repeat and do the second sock so here's the lucida sock um, and then the yarn that Donna, excuse me, the, that Lauren used to um, make the sample was from the Louise Robert collection. That's her super sock. And it, that is comprised of three quarters superwash merino and one quarter of uh, nylon. Uh, this is in the colorway lock, L-O-C-H, which is the same as the poncho that I'm wearing. Although this is from a different yarn, but it's the same color. See how it blends together. Uh, okay, so in terms of the technicals, um, the gauge to knit in for this pattern is eight and a half stitches to an inch and 1.5 US 1.5 needle was used to knit the sample and that would be two and 2.5 millimeters for the rest of the world. Um, and in terms of the sizing for this sock pattern, there are three sizes available, um, although they are for adult sizing, not for children, unless there is a, it's for a child with a bigger foot. Um, I think like maybe six, uh, six inches six inches around for the leg so uh, maybe it might work for even like a tween um, but yeah basically your standard adult sizing small medium large um, are the three sizes that's charted for this sock next up we're going to talk about the poncho that i'm wearing it's called the mile and poncho designed by donna Estin. Uh, before we go into the construction of the poncho let me talk to you about the yarn uh, this one, again, it, uh, the designer had chosen uh, something from the Louise Robert collection, but this time it's the granola from the line granola. And granola is comprised of 70% merino wool and 30% hemp. And this guy is our more popular yarn used to knit up uh, warm weather garments uh, because as we have previously discussed in a previous episode uh, merino wool is really good all season uh, uh, wool fiber because of um, the word that I didn't use previously but what I meant to use is the word ventilation it ventilates well that wool the merino wool and then uh, the hemp fiber, um, you know, obviously is from a plant um, and it's more porous. So all in all, it makes for a really good option uh, to knit a summer top or a, a, a poncho or something. You know, uh, I think this piece I'm going to show you in a little bit. I'm going to stand up and show you. This would be a pretty good um, beach wear. Um, like when you're hanging out on the beach all day or by the lakeside or whatever, and then you need to throw something over so that you can go into the lake house for a drink or, you know, whatever, uh, go into the deck for a bite to eat. Uh, I think this will make a really cool uh, uh, bathing suit cover up. Anyway, so uh, that's the yarn granola. Um, as, uh, as far as the technicals go, uh, we used, let's take a look, a US size six or four millimeter needle uh, to knit this project. And the gauge is five stitches to an inch. So whatever needle you need to use in order to get five stitches, but roughly it would be the US six. Uh, there are four sizes uh, in the pattern for this poncho. Even though it's a poncho, it's not a one size fit all. Uh, the designer had worked it out so that you know it would be more size inclusive. Uh, there are four sizes available for this poncho. Now let's talk about the construction of this piece. It's basically a big rectangle. And then when towards the end, you're gonna take two sides and then um, sew it together. And let me go a little bit more in depth. So we start at, stand up and show you. So here uh, you start with the border. Um, so you would knit, you would um, cast on this many number of stitches. So not too many. And then you would repeat this lace pattern all the way across 
until you get a really wide band. And then once you're done, you're gonna come back and pick up stitches along the top edge. And then you're going to be knitting the, the whole width of the rectangle. Uh, and then you would add on the length of it in this lace pattern, uh, the fish lace. And then once you are almost at the top, you're going to knit across some, and then for the neck opening, there will be special instruction for knitting like that little bit there. And then you're gonna continue on to the rest of the rectangle, and then you're gonna work your way back similarly. And finally, when all that is said and done, um, you're gonna sew the two pieces together, like I said earlier, uh, with the three needle bind off. And then you, and you know, so you'll have this opening and you just put your head through it and then here it is. So um, you can see on camera here, I'm kind of like wearing it so that the opening is to one side. I'm right hand dominant, so I'm having it open on my right side. Um, and then the left side kind of drapes like this. So you can see, I'm wearing a tank top right now, so you can kind of get the idea of what I mean by how this might be a good uh, thing to throw over your bathing suit. Um, so here it is, and this is how it looks, this is how it drapes. Finally, we're gonna be talking about this shawl. It's called the Palmer House Shawl. Let's talk about the construction first, and then we'll talk about the technicals and the yarns and stuff. Here it is. Uh, this shawl is knitted from the top here. You cast on X number of stitches, and then you would let the piece grow um, by doing increases. I'm holding it up here so you can see, um, I hope you'll be able to see with the lighting, uh, the three sections. Here's one, in the middle there's two, like a arch going that way and then here's the third piece. So the increases are done along here and then the piece grows and grows and grows widthwise. Um, the body of the shawl is uh, just knit, 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 knit. So it's garter stitch um, until you get to the end here. The base of it is um, ribbing or variation thereof. And then at the very end, let me stand up um is the edging i still don't really know how you pronounce it i think in french you would call it pico and then in english do you call it picot or do you go by the native language language where it came from so um but the little nubby thing i'm gonna say pico and hope i'm right <laughs> you can correct me in the comments let me know um anyway so this unlike the cowl, I think would be a good choice for a uh, beginner or advanced beginner. Um, like I said before, uh, my students were watching me like prepare for this episode. So people showed interest for that. And then I also have another student who showed interest in making the shawl. Uh, she's already committed to it. She bought the yarn and have it wound it up. Uh, it's even in the same color. So um, this construction she hasn't done before, so I will be coaching her along the way, but uh, she's a smart one. She probably won't need much help from me, but it's definitely, I think, uh, pretty attainable for uh, a beginner. Um, so let's talk about the technicality of this shawl. Uh, Palmer House was designed by Louise Roberts. It's actually an oldie, but it's definitely a goodie. Uh, she designed it back in 2015 in Chicago at the Palmer House Hotel. Uh, that's where she got the inspiration from. Uh, this is an updated pattern. And for the update, she had chosen the Biscott Yarns Albus. And Albus is made up of 50% merino wool and sorry, and 50% of silk. Um, the student whom I was saying that she's gonna make that shawl, she actually bought the very same color like I was seeing. Here's another plus about coming into the physical store because you can try things on and see how it looks on you, how it feels. And then if it's your jam, then you will feel more confident committing to it, right? So uh, that's what she did because she tried it on. It 
draped so perfectly on her. It's just her size. Um, and the color looked really, really good on her. Uh, it's a really beautiful purple. Anyway, I keep digressing in today's episode. I'm so sorry. Anyway, uh, so technicals. For this one, the gauge is three stitches to an inch using a, a size seven millimeter, which is 10.75 US uh, knitting needles. Uh, I think that's a little bit strange, but strange as it is, I do own a pair of 10.75 uh, knitting needles. I have no idea why. It was pretty on in my knitting career, if you will. Um, I, I, I can't remember when I got it exactly, where or why, like I said, but I do own a pair. And there was an occasion, besides this one that I'm encountering right now, where I actually needed that size needle. So, uh, I don't think they come in the interchangeables. I've, I have three sets of interchangeables and I don't think that it's in any of my interchangeable sets. So I wonder if the 10.75 or the seven millimeter would only come as a standalone. But anyway, here I go digressing again. Um, okay, so <laughs> the three stitches to an inch, 10.75, and then the size of the shawl is 60, 63 inches wide, the whole wingspan, and the depth of it is 16 inches. The time has come for us to say goodbye. Thank you so much for staying with me to the end. Uh, episode 10, wow. <laughs> I, I hope you enjoyed today's content and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Um, per usual, if you are knitting with our yarn or working off one of our patterns, we truly do want to see your work in progress and also your finished objects. So don't forget to tag us uh, when you post them on your Instagram, Biscott Yarns. Until next time. Happy crafting.